We believe in Musqueam, we call it one heart, one mind, one spirit. Because when you connect to your heart, you also connect to your mind. The feelings of goodness come from the heart, which connects to the mind. And when you connect to those parts of your body, your mind and your soul, you can be stronger, you can grow, and you can be productive. Well, it's so exciting to bring people together from across the education sector, from the community sector, people who work on child and youth mental health, because we really need to work as teams and start early with kids in our schools and have the schools also connected to community services. That's the fundamental thinking behind a child and youth mental health plan that we're working on for the entire province. I think this is a really great idea to connect students with people in power and teachers as well and discuss ways to not only improve mental health uh, initiatives in the schools, but also to improve understanding. Well, what you have at this conference is 550 of the strongest, most engaged leaders on youth mental health. And um, hard enough to believe, but just a year and a half ago, we had never done this before. Commitment to uh, a focus on mental health in the Ministry of Education is not confined to a conference here or there. Um, I want you to uh, understand that uh, the year 2019, we hope to use the momentum that all of you gave us last year and continue to give us to make this a multi-year process. We are going to go forward with a focus on mental health uh, for as long as we need until we get better and better at it, until more and more young people uh, are able to feel that they have the supports that they need to be successful. The youth are here and we're speaking and I'm hoping that the teachers and administrators and the liaison officers, everyone who's here will really try and listen to what the youth are saying and, you know, have those beautiful takeaways that they can have because what we're saying is valuable and, you know, it can be used. I also really love the connection between how the educators and the administrators can um, co connect with students. I think the importance of these gatherings is, is so extremely uh, useful because the conversation needs to happen. Uh, this is something that we've been talking about forever, but I feel like now there's starting to be a platform for a lived experience. Now there's starting to be a platform for people to talk about these issues. And there's so many barriers in mental health, and there's so many things we're still working on, as for many of the systems that we encounter in life. For the first time, this generation that's in school right now, for the first time is the generation that's fully understanding Canada's history. I don't say Indigenous history, because this is not just our history. This is Canada's history. So understanding the legacy of residential schools, Indian day schools, the hospitals, the 60 scoop, the Indian Act, all of those systems that have caused harm is the first time young people are understanding this. So I can hardly wait to see what happens through their moral courage in 10, 15, 20 years in our society. Our songs are our medicine and our healing. I hope the voices of our youth will lift your spirits and allow you to finish your day in a good way. And this is our gift to you. There are still huge barriers to young people and families coming forward and talking openly about mental health and substance use issues. So conferences like this help to bring down the walls of silence and for everyone to be able to say, it's okay. So how can we now take what we already know and we understand and actually put it into practice? What are those activities? How can we actually move this further along the spectrum of becoming something that's embedded into the culture of all our organizations, which is our ultimate vision, is how do we make mental health a part of every single school community? Are we really engaging in the things that matter most? 
So you're absolutely right. You don't fix a broken system. You allow yourself to get engaged in a way that it starts to improve. But of course, like anything in life, it'll improve for a while, and then new problems will come, and then new problems will come. The question is, do we have a sense of efficacy that we actually can do something that improves matters? Again, it's not about fixing them once and for all. That's much more a machine kind of image. The machine is broken. We got to fix it. But the truth is, these are problems that we live through. The question is, are we alive? Are we really engaged? Are we doing the things that really matter? And do people have a sense of of deep confidence that we really can move? So before Peter's work, we had design thinking, and we had incorporated some of those tools as some of our first steps. But then with his work, we've been able to see, okay, these are some added places that we can actually make them real authentic experiences. And so even even just using his work, you could make them quite surface. Mm -hmm. But you need to actually get to a place of who you really are and who the people around you really are, so that you can actually push each other a bit. We need to understand the keys to what those organizational changes are. And principal leadership training is a key factor because we know that principals who lead their schools as caring social emotional leaders have teachers who feel free to innovate in ways that are creative to build relationships with kids, to make their classrooms the kind of family environments that they, they want them to be. I am fascinated, continue to be fascinated by the fact that we know being outside makes things better. We know it reduces anxiety, it increases focus, it um, builds connections, and yet we still spend most of our time indoors. Um, but we're seeing that change. We're seeing, and that's one of the things that I am really, brings me joy, is the stories that I hear about our learners being outside more and more. We know, just so you know, as children enter adolescence, you see it's a typical pattern of seeing declines in motivation, increases in self-consciousness, uh, increases in importance of the peer group. Those are, the research will tell us those are sort of trajectories that we see that we can expect. So, for example, if you're doing a survey of data from fourth to seventh grade, and you see that kids are, are staying the same, you might say, oh, they should be getting better. Actually, them mm. staying the same is a good thing, mm. because typically the pattern is they go get worse. Mm -hmm. So if they're staying the same, it's an interpretation mm -hmm. of the data based on the science. Yes, right, so you need that triangulated in. My hope, my intention, is that we do have a seamless system of supports for young people, that we build resiliency younger in them so that the kids don't get to crisis and teachers aren't overwhelmed and that we're able to support each other authentically. And the conversation isn't about removing stigma, it's about continuing to lift each other up and support them as they bring their whole selves to work, to life, to play.